So the former Manston Airport site has been sold to the company uh, River Oak, which wants to reopen it for cargo and short-haul flights. It closed as an airport in 2014, was sold to Stonehill Park, which wanted to build thousands of homes on there. Uh, the campaign to reopen it was key to UKIP gaining control of the district council. Uh, back in 2015, that River Oak applied for a development uh, consent order from the government to class it as being of national significance and the outcome on that is still due. So, with history of the Manston sites long, uh, it started life as an uh, an RF base, and uh, then since then, it's been a commercial uh, concern. It's failed several times to actually work. With me now is Labour uh, County Councillor Karen Constantine, who joins us. Um, so, Karen, wh- what's your reaction to this? Well, um, I was... I was quite surprised to hear the news, but then when I really thought about it, I thought, well, it's actually not a surprise, is it? Mm. Stonehill Park, say themselves, they've put in seven figures in terms of investing into that site, and they've got very little to show for their investment. So now that it's partly funded by Department for Transport as part of Operation Brock, Operation Stack, maybe that turns it into a going concern, and River Oak can get the money to buy the land, which seems to be what, what's happening. However, we are still not going to be certain of the future for the Manston site. The DCO DCO still has to conclude whether or not aviation is a viable option there and whether air cargo is a viable option. So we've still got till 2020 to wait for an outcome. Mm. What's the downside to this then? If if people have the opportunity and the money and want to try it, is is the downside not building the more homes that need to be built? Well, one of the downsides has been, and certainly if you speak to residents in Birchington, they've ended up having uh, consent given for lands, for property to be built in an already developed area. Um, that property would have probably been built on Manston if, um, if planning permission had been given to go ahead for the mixed use developing. And don't let's forget that the officers at Planning District Council did recommend that planning proposal to the councillors sitting, and it was the Conservative councillors that decided to vote against it. So one of the downsides is going to be we've still got to find the land to build the houses that the government instructs us to build. We have to find a land supply. The other thing, I think, and I think it's a burden for the local population, that they haven't, they, they haven't got clarity. I haven't got clarity. They haven't got clarity. Um, we don't want to be arguing about this. I'm sure we all want to move forward with, you know, prosperity for the whole population in mind, but that just doesn't seem to be happening at the moment. Uh, so we've not heard from uh, Dr Weber yet. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to be with us. Is this good news for you, then? Extremely good news, thank you very much. We've been waiting for this for five and a half years, working towards it, trying to support the people of Thanet and uh, East Kent that say they want this airport open, and we've been backing them and providing them information to, as we have worked towards this very important day. Is it all definitely going to happen now, then? Well, we still have to have the DCO go through, hmm. um, but that is now much more easier that uh, the finances are sorted. Manston is... River Oak are paying for Manston. There's no uh, um, uh, payment questions now uh, other than to pay for the airport. And that should be... That is much simpler in the DCO than having the money to actually buy the airport. Karen, I know so before... There, the- because we have Karen still with us, and before you were saying the yes. problem is the lack of a certainty into the future, is it in any way has that uh, put your mind at rest? Yes, totally. Um, well, uh, well, let Karen respond to this sorry, one, and we can get we sorry, can get discussion. Okay, well, I, I still don't think we've got certainty because we don't know, we can't predict what the outcome of the DCO is. What we have got is we've got sort of split opinions in the community. So there's an awful long way that River River Oak have to go. In, or, in order to convey to the general public and to alleviate their concerns about pollution, about night flights, about noise. There and are no night flights, huge, Karen. You know there's no night flights. Huge. Other, well, I've looked at that contract myself and I could see shoulder hour flights, so it depends how you define night. But for Kent County Council, when they were asked to do a, rep- a repost to um, the extension at Gatwick Airport, they said interruption of sleep was a a vital issue for people. 
to be sacrificed. I would hope that Kent County Council would afford that same issue of comfort to the, the residents of Ramsgate. I understand. I mean, I think it's an important point here. The community is divided on this. I mean, whoever you speak to, you've got strong views. What we need from River Oak now is we need really clear really factual, really candid messages so that people can really understand what's going on. It is debatable whether or not the airport will return to aviation. And in the meantime, we all have to move forward as a community. Uh, I imagine you want to come back on that point, Bo? Yes, indeed. (laughs) We believe that there is now an extremely high chance that Manson will return for aviation. It will be a much... a, a bigger airport... That is necessary to make it financially very viable. River Oak and their many um, private investors, it is not relying on government funding to run. It is relying on private investors, and they are quite clear that they believe Manston Airport will be very financially beneficial for them. So it's more, it's fun. Just to double check then, so it's, it's, because in the past it didn't necessarily make it in when it came to, you know, free market, it didn't really float. But you reckon as a bigger airport, it stands a better chance of success. To those ears. Yes. I was going to say. One and a half cargo stands before. Hmm. It will now have up to 17, 19 cargo stands will be built progressively. That means that rather than if a plane arrives, it has to wait for the previous plane to be unloaded. It just goes on to another cargo stand. So, it also means that in many other airports, they have to have night flights to cope with the necessary flow of cargo that's required. Manston won't. It will have enough daytime slots, cargo stands, no need to circle the airport to land. They will go straight in. They'll be un- unloaded. I've seen them unloaded and off in the air in less than an hour before myself. But that's still to those local ears that think that they don't necessarily want the additional uh, noise pollution and, I guess, air pollution as well, of of having more flights flying over them. That saying that it's going to be bigger and therefore successful uh, is not necessarily going to put their minds at rest. Also, if if you're worried about the the extra traffic on the road because of the road-based infrastructure... That is negligible. That That is really negligible. We're talking about if a a plane comes in from Schiphol, uh, 35-minute flight to, to... uh, the hub, Schiphol hub, where you can fly all over the world. I've flown to Atlanta, to Washington, D.C. Um, from there, you have, on those planes, will work out at about eight planes per hour left, going east and going right, go, sorry, eight, car, eight planes, oh, excuse me. That will work out at eight uh, cars per hour going east and eight cars per hour going west on the Manston Road. We're talking about about a road that carries... Can I come in on that? Yeah, please do. Yeah, Karen, what's your thoughts? I mean, a a report recently uh, was launched to the National Infrastructure Committee um, on, on freight... And it's clear that we have a statutory responsibility to move towards a carbon-free society, and that target is 2050. For the purposes of road freight, we need to move to carbonless technology by about 2030. We've already got gridlock, um, not into Thanet, but off Thanet, further off on the, on the main roads around the M25. This is going to add to that. Not only have you got cargo landing and being taken out, but you also have cargo cargo being driven in. Now, I think this has got huge implications right the way up to the M25. I don't think the roads can bear it. I'm not seeing the plan here to move towards an environmentally friendly form of freight transport. That's a key challenge. Not only will Ramsgate residents be outraged by this, but environmentalists across the South East will be outraged by this. So I think... If the plan is really to have 17 stands for cargo built at Manson, I think you'll see much more robust opposition because it actually sounds like a nightmare. Well, can I come back on that? Please do. This cargo is not sitting in the warehouses doing nothing after being made. It's being trucked across to the continent. It is fly. It is the passengers are not sitting at home. They're driving to Gatwick and Heathrow. So you're saying it's, it's effectively the traffic it's, on the M25. It's a sunk cost, effectively. That the the carbon cost would happen elsewhere. Yes. Okay. Let's, the carbon cost is happening already. Let's move on to the and, the money side of it because this is that seems to be looks like the biggest stumbling block still to lie ahead. This is an expensive operation. This is not an airport that's ready to go straight away. So do we have confidence that the money's going to be there? 
very much so. River Oak have lots of investors. We have just received a letter that went onto pins in about the last two weeks, I believe, where somebody says, points out that they have about 400 million in the bank or in, in investments, and they are they have they are planning in spending 250 million on Manston, and this is just one of a number of of investors that are um, being uh, that are coming forward. Okay. They uh, are reluctant to come forward because often their names, if their names are released, people ring them up, harangue them by email, and generally make life very difficult for them. Karen, is that what people? Is that well, what you do? Do you disagree so much you'd harangue? I, I wouldn't phone anybody up by <laughs> and harangue them over an issue like this. I might write them a stiffly worded letter, but that is probably as far as I would go. I might lay down in the road if I really protested against something. However, this doesn't really cut it because in order to move forward with an operation of this scale, you need to find a number of things. One is the absolutely cast iron investment, wherever that comes from. Two, you then need to purchase that infrastructure to be developed Three, you need to find the workforce, train the workforce in order to do that operation. So the scale of this ambition is absolutely huge. And I think that's partly where it will come unstuck. But it's almost it's almost too big. It, we've currently got uh, waterways. We've currently, we're currently using sea ferries really adequately well in order to transfer freight. We can take those round to Hull. We can take those to different places. That is something, transport by waterway is something that we could look a lot more into. I think the other issue as well with looking at the jobs front is the impact of artificial technology, AI, and again, carbonless um, technology. This is going to have a major impact. So in one way, I can see that maybe we would get some jobs in the area. But in another way, I could also see if this gets off the ground, no pun intended, and it's a big if, but actually those jobs might not be there either. So what would be the benefit for the people well, listen, of Stanley? Thank you to both. We've got to move on. I think we've gave it uh, hopefully enough space to get into the debate. And the debate will continue. But thank you to uh, both their local Labour County Councillor, Karen Constantine. And we also spoke with Dr. Bo Weber from Save Manston Airport.